Hey, welcome to good day, everybody. This is Sports Side News. I'm Joe Borg, and it's going to be a quick few-minute recap of the Greensville Swamp Rabbits series against the Jacksonville Icemen. Uh, the Greensville Swamp Rabbits <clears throat> uh, this season finished, of course, in the in the regular season race. They finished below the Florida Everblades in fourth place. This was the battle of the first to fourth place team similar to my Reading Royals against the Maine Mariners. So it was expected as they had 94 points of the 76 of the Swamp Rabbits for the Swamp Rabbits to lose this series, which is why it was actually good on their end, the perseverance and fight they showed even while falling in this series, in this in this series as a whole. Because the first game they lost in OT, 4-3. Uh, to three. So obviously they showed a lot of grit battle in that one. 5-3 to three in the next one. 4-3 to three again in OT, kind of a repeating theme in this one, uh, OT. And then 2-1 to one in a great <clears throat> goalie dual defense game, 2-1 uh, to one on Friday the 29th. 4-3, to three, then Greensville's able to get Florida back from a score, so that's a repeating theme as well. And that was a final in double OT to wave off elimination and potentially the game of the Kelly Cup playoffs this far because you have double OT to wave off elimination. The problem then for the Swamp Rabbits' perspective is it seemed to kind of drown them out and not have enough energy as then they fell 5-1 in a great game by the Everblades as the Everblades were able to clinch it and walk away and not have to worry about anything at that point um, as they won 5-1 to one in a great overall game by the Everblades. As a McCarron scored... Zach Solo scored, uh, Joe Pedenza scored twice, and then Derek and Jelly scored. Only Bobby R Russell scored uh, for the Greensville Swamp Rabbits. So from the Jacksonville <clears throat> um, Ever or from Jacksonville Everblades, from the Florida Everblades perspective, I had the Iceman on my mind because that's the series preview I'm doing in a bit for both of those teams. From the Florida Everblades perspective, they played a series that I think similar to how they say the playoffs are never easy. What my Reading Royals were able to do is I covered the Reading Royals in color commentary. Uh, got the privilege to do that with our Jess Berger now as well. But it's similar. Like they played a lot tighter of a series, and this one was even tighter and even more battle struck than the Royals won against Maine because it didn't go to the, all these overtimes. That it's going to be interesting to see from the Everblades' perspective coming into the Icemen, who had an easy series in all things considered. Nothing's easy in the playoffs. They were still close games, a lot of them. But, like, it had, an, in all things considered, they swept them and had the days off, even though they had to have great goaltending in certain games by Broussard. But, but, but still, you know what I'm saying. The Everblades don't have that rest, and they had to play two double overtime games. And, or no, 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 one double overtime game, excuse me. Um, and two overtime games in this series. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see where their legs are at. The first game started with an overtime, um, of course, which was the win, and then you saw that kind of affect them for the second game on the 23rd, the Everblaze perspective, where Greensville was able to take advantage of them to get that 5-3 to three win. So we already saw the tiredness of overtimes kind of affect Florida, but then they immediately stepped back after the off days on the 27th, and they took the 4-3 to three win in overtime. They took the 2-1 to one win, then the two days later, it wasn't the next day, um, and then they took the or they took the loss the next day, but then capitalized, and that was in double overtime. Those games basically are games that once you get into double overtime, it just comes down to almost bounces and fruition and luck, and, and, and as much as it does skill because everyone's gassed at that point, so that just makes it completely different. But uh, Nikita uh, Pavlashev, who I always mispronounce his name, but a good player for the Swamp Rabbits, was able to win that for them in double overtime. Coughlin, McDonald, and Beccaro were the scorers, and then Gennaro, Winnicki, and LeBlanc were the scorers for the Everblades. But going forward, I think the Everblades, this is a series, I said it similar in my video on the Reading Royals, that I'll link at the end here if you want to watch that on that series, and also on the Iceman. I didn't say this about the Iceman because they had an easier series, but it's a perseverance series that I think builds character for the Everblades, because sometimes it's honestly better, in my opinion, other than if you just look, I guess, as goaltending started, as the Iceman, you can do what you did, sweep, have the offense, and play aggressive like that, and then let the goaltender do his thing. But when it comes to most other teams, I think the Everblades played a little bit 
too aggressive at times in this series that kind of maybe cost them in moments to be able to keep these games so close, like the five to threes, four to three games that were just a repeating theme in this series, uh, minus the two to one game that they won on the 29th and the five to one whopping on the final game of the series by the Everblades. Then, then that five to one game, I think they played the most going, okay, we need to end this here. Let's play the most within ourselves, just push the offense, but also play the best defense in front of our netminder. And I think that's kind of what was able to get the Everblades <clears throat> over the hump, in my opinion, in the end, uh, because they kind of just started to play the regular system, and then Johnson was able to have a good game in net. Um, so I think this series was a fun series to watch, obviously one of the most fun series to watch because it had multitudes of overtimes, but I do think the Everblades are still set up for success because this build perseverance and character is just going to be, will it be one of those things that they play too deep into games in the first round that it affects them too much going forward because the Royals at Perseverance and Character wins, but they never went into the overtimes. Or the Everblades went into two overtimes and one double. So they've had a lot of hockey action coming into this first week. And to, to put that all together, they played on the second, then they play again on the sixth. The Icemen are going to have a heck ton of rest uh, by then. As the Everblades played on the second, uh, just to put it in perspective, the last time the Jacksonville Icemen played to finish their series was April 28th. So they're going to have quite a few extra days of rest. They're going to be coming out really jumping. So the Everblades are going to have to, and that's going to be what I talked about in that, my uh, series preview to that, but are going to have to really come out with the great energy that you know, at least you know it seems from how they played in the first round, uh, being able to sweep the Gladiators and now having the rest that the Icemen are going to come out with. But I'll leave that for the series preview. Overall, Great series by the Florida Everblades. It wasn't the sexiest series for their fans, but they wanted to probably see it get over in five rather than uh, push it all the way. Um, but not push the series all the way, obviously, but push it longer as they won the first game, lost the second, won the third, won the fourth, lost the fifth, and then won the sixth, similar uh, to the Reading Royals uh, mantra there. But I think this was a good series to build character and perseverance, and that's really just my key here. Sometimes that's a great key. And a great thing in the postseason is just the difference between the Everblades and other teams that had those first-round series. Is they didn't go to double overtime and overtime twice, so I'm interested to see how that affects them. But this has been the series from mostly the winning teams' perspective, but I did start with Greensville perspective. I'll be doing a season recap on them where I'll go over their overall team more for their fans. But please continue to subscribe down below or up above on the Easy Juice Ridges. Keep the channel growing to 250 or more by the start of June. I really appreciate your guys' love and support this far. Peace out, everybody, and stay safe.